mention some of the superheroes that are in the Bible. Uh, beginning, we're going chronologically. Uh, beginning with Noah, because he built the ark. That's in Genesis six, and. Uh, when he built the ark, he was subject to a lot of ridicule and a lot of uh, comments because he was on dry land and he did what God told him to do, told him to uh, go ahead and build the ark, gave him the, gave him the dimensions and so forth and told him to gather the animals and so forth, which he did. And then when the flood came, of course, the ark floated and uh, the rest of the people who had derided him were unfortunately drowned. Uh, the second one, I have uh, Abraham and Isaac, and the reason for that is because he was willing to sacrifice his only son, and this is when he was 100 years old, and his wife was 90 years old, and they finally had a child, and this child was very treasured, but God said he would go up on the mountain and sacrifice him. And he did. And so this is heroic in fact that uh, he uh, was willing to do this because God told him to. And then God prevented him from killing Isaac because he said uh, the Lord will provide a sacrifice and there was a ram magically appearing in the thicket and he was told not to sacrifice his son. And uh, The third is David and Goliath, and I don't know if we all realize that David was about 13 years old, and this is King David, it's the beginning of his uh, appearance in the Bible, and at his age, uh, he was uh, called by the Lord to present himself and, and fight the city of your life, and uh, Goliath was a Philistine. And he was huge. And King Saul tried to put his armor on David, and he couldn't move in it. It was so it was so heavy. But uh, he said, "I don't need this. All I need is five stones from the from the river and my slingshot." And he said, "I have killed wolves and bears and saved my sheep, and consequently, I don't need this armor." And so, of course, Goliath was insulted because they sent this child to confront him. But he, uh, he uh, prevailed, and he threw him with the first shot. And after that, he went back to tending his father's sheep. And it wasn't until uh, Samuel was told to go ahead and, and be sure to... Uh, um, anoint him as the king, and this is several years later. And number four is someone that I don't think we pay very much attention to, and that's Samson, and that's in Judges 13. At that time, the Israelites wanted, uh, they wanted a king, because everybody else had a king, so they wanted a king. And the Lord kept telling them, I am your king, and I'm sufficient for you, but they wouldn't pay attention. And so they appointed judges, what they called judges. And these people would rule Israel and, uh, for a certain length of time, and then another one would take over. But uh, when Samson's mother became pregnant with Samson, an angel of the Lord appeared to her, and told her that this child was going to be very special and she should not eat anything uh, alcoholic or impure and she should be very careful what she did and when he was born that his hair should never be cut he was going to be what they called an Nazarite and uh, so she obeyed and uh, his hair was never cut, and he was raised uh, very carefully. Nothing unclean. And uh, so when he was around 20 years old, uh, he saw uh, a young lady. Now, 
God had chosen him to be the first person to start to deliver the Israelites from the Philistines. And uh, he saw this young lady and he told his father he wanted to marry her. Now she was a Philistine. And so a lot of things are contrary to what he would believe that he would be doing. But he was not perfect by any means. He was a uh, uh, one of these heroes that are either bad or good depending upon how you, how you look at it. So anyway, he's going along the road one time and he, a lion attacks him. And when the lion attacks him, he killed it. He had very great strength due to the Lord. And he killed it. And another time he went by and he... Uh, saw that thieves had started a hive in his carcass, in the lion's carcass. And so he took the honey out, and he ate some of the honey, he gave some to his parents, but he didn't tell them where he got it. And um, he uh, made a wager before the feast, before his wedding feast. Uh, he presented them with a riddle. Uh, and the riddle had to do with uh, out of something strong, something sweet. And uh, so while they're waiting uh, to, to have the feast, the Philistines approach the wife and tell them you've got to, you've got to uh, tell, you know, find out why he's so strong. And you've got to know the answer to the riddle. Because he said, if you can guess my riddle, then I will give you 30 sets of clothing. And if you can't, you've got to give me 30 sets of clothing. Well, she tells, she, she cries for seven days. And uh, finally, <laughs> finally, he, he gets tired of hearing her, and so he tells her what, what how, how it came about, about the lion and the honey. So she tells the, she tells the Philistines, and they guess the riddle. So after they guess the riddle, he, he knows he, he said, if you hadn't plowed with my heifer, you, could, you would not know the answer to this. So he goes out and he gets, he takes out 30 people and just takes their clothing and pays off the, the debt, the riddle. So this does not work very well. But uh, then they give his wife away. They figure that he's angry so he leaves. He does not marry her at the time and um, he leaves. And uh, they figure that he's angry with the wife, and so they give her to his best man. I mean, this is, I don't understand how they do these things together. So, then later on he comes and he wants to visit his wife. And they tell him, no, because we gave, we gave her away, we gave her to your best man. So he gets very angry. And it's harvest time. So being harvest time, he catches 300 foxes. Now, I don't know how many foxes there are in Israel, but to catch 300 of them would be quite, quite difficult. And he ties their tails together, two at a time, and puts a torch on the tails and sends them into the harvest. And of course, the harvest burns. All the all the wheat that the Philistines have planted, and it also destroys olive trees, the great arbors, and so forth and so on. And the Philistines are furious, and they want to know why was this done. And the state explained, well, because of the the wife and her father, because he allowed her to marry him, and so forth. And so they burn the Philistines, burn wife and father alive. So this is, this is becoming uh, rather bad. So then after that, 
who rules Israel for 20 years. And they don't mention him again. And now you know that everybody has considered Samson and Delilah a love story. But it's not really a love story. They wrote an opera about it and uh, embellished it and so forth. But uh, I don't see where it's much of a love story. He sees her and falls in love with her. And at that time, the Philistines had a, a system of, they had five people that they called elders, and they apparently they rotated when their time was over, these five more came and so forth. But the five ones that were in charge at that time came to Delilah and said to her, we will give you, we will give you 1,100 silver shekels each if you will betray Samson and find out why he's so strong. So she starts asking Samson, why are you so strong and what, what, what will it take to disable you? Now I would think that that would be an automatic turn off. He should know, I mean the first fight did the same thing. Why didn't he realize that, uh, you know, uh, we don't ask questions like that if we're supposedly true, but um, she persists and she persists. She tells her several times several things, like, uh, oh, if you tie me to so-and-so, I'll be just like any other man. So, of course, she, she does that, and when he wants to get uh, away, he just gets away. He can break binds uh, and so forth. And so, uh, he gets, uh, he gets up and he gets very angry, uh, because she keeps, she keeps bothering him and telling him. Finally, she tells her about his hair. So, she gets him to go to sleep and calls him in and they shave his head and he is no longer strong and he has of course betrayed the Lord so they tie him up they gouge his eyes out and they make him be just like a an ox going around with a grindstone and that's where they put him but they only forgot one thing is his hair would go back and so after several years, they're having a big feast, and with this large feast, they get Samson to come out, and I guess to, to, to ridicule him, he has to be led everywhere because he has no sight, and he is very humble. And after a while, they assemble in this temple in Gaza. And all the Philistines and all the elders and all the people that are supposedly important are in the temple. And Samson recalls his, his heritage of being loved by the Lord. And in doing so, he asks him, please, let me be strong one more time. And he tells the person who has led him out, Please put me in the temple and let me rest my hands upon the pillars so that I can be supported and know where I am. So the person does this and he's able to break the pillars and the roof and everything fall down on in the temple. He completely destroys the temple and he destroys himself at the same time and he dies but he has wiped out the Philistines the not the entire tribe but anyway the, 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 the government group and a lot of dignitaries and so forth and uh, that's the way judges end and uh, not judges end but the, the one about the uh, so 
I'm not going to mention about all the thousands she killed and the ones she killed with the jawbone of an ass and so forth because it's too much. <laughs> and um, so then, therefore, we have John the Baptist, who is a martyr, and he could not see the fact that he uh, had married his brother's wife and thought that was perfectly all right, but John felt that that was wrong, knew that that was wrong, and so he was in prison, and finally, uh, John the Baptist was put to death for his conviction. And then we have the greatest super hero of all, Jesus. And saying the things he did is not necessary. He healed lepers, he healed the blind, the crippled, the demon possessed. He said the five thousand with five loaves and two fish. He walked on water. He raised from the dead Lazarus. Jairus' daughter, he was one of the rulers. The widow from Maine, her only son, he took pity on her because she had lost her only son. And this was something he was able to do. And another miracle, which would have also very much impressed me, how many of us who pay taxes could tell a friend Fishing, go, go get a fish and first fish you catch, the, the, the taxes will be in its mouth. I um, mean, that, that, if I was a Roman soldier and I saw somebody do that, I would either start kicking or, uh, or I would feel very, very concerned about, about trying to capture Jesus. But uh, that, was, that was another miracle. And, uh, of course, dying for us and forgiving us our sins. I think that I, I can't imagine anyone doing something. He lived his whole life knowing he was going to die, knowing how he was going to die, and the fact that he was willing to do this because it's what his father wanted is so touching, so amazing that, that he would be willing to do this. He overcame temptation for us. And now, uh, his miracles were acts of love by one who is love. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. I have five more at home with you. <laughs> <laughs> if I give you five, would you bring it? <laughs> because, you know, they don't have any here. Oh, really? No. Oh. The All the rest of the good things are, yeah, are big events. We're going to do um, kind of a two-part blessing. Um, <coughs> one is blessing you as we go to this new venture and uh, check this all out. And it's a prayer for guidance. It says, Go before us, O Lord, and all our doings and with your most gracious favor, and further us with your continual help, that in all work begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally through your mercy obtain everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And in blessing, it's, um, to concentrate is, is a um, unique thing, but in blessing, 
it's also unique, but it's, it's a, a um, slightly different than, than, but it is inviting the Holy Spirit to have a special presence with the strength of it. And that when you put it on or when you look at it, it's just a constant reminder of, of God's love for you and, and of our love for you as well. May this mountain be a safe haven, a safe place of security and well-being. Sustaining and embracing in good times as well as difficult times. And may the one who receives this call, Alex Rockman, be cradled in hope, kept in joy, grace the peace, and wrapped in love. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.